Welcome to the AccuShield podcast. This is Deontay Davis, VP of Sales, and today I'm joined by Christy Parsons, VP of People at Schlegel Villages. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Christy, glad to have you here. And you're also speaking at the AccuShield Healthcare Staffing Innovation Workshop. And so, you know, most people know AccuShield as mm-hmm. the touchscreen kiosk for senior living, put it mm-hmm. at the front desk, it really helps you to understand who's inside the building from a safety and security perspective. But as of recently, we've partnered with Book Jane to create AccuShield Flex, who you all use for quite some time, to really help with shift management, you know, making sure shifts are filled through scheduling, automated call out, all that. So first, would just love to hear a little bit more about your backstory, how you got into senior living and, you know, what made you stay? It's a great question. I kind of grew up in senior living. So I started uh, as a student at one of our first locations. Uh, we have 19 communities, um, and at the time we only had one. And uh, it's family owned and operated, so the family would be in there every day. I was a rec and leisure student and um, loved it. And at the time there wasn't a lot of jobs, so I was thrilled. I thought I hit the gold mine to get a job uh, right out of college when I graduated. And uh, I grew up in the organization. I did leave for a short time, but I've been back now for 14 years. And, you know, it's one of the most rewarding careers just to know that you are making a difference in how residents experience their day, as well as team members, too. But if you would have told 21-year-old Christy, one day you're going to be the VP of people, I would have laughed hysterically and just thought you were, you know, not not uh, in a well state of mind. Um, so I've, I've been in probably eight different roles, operations, education, training, but um, it's fantastic and I love every minute. Yeah. So been in eight different roles over 14 years of Schlegel, which is a long time. Collectively at, at 22 years. Gosh, yeah. yeah. It's even longer. Yeah. So that, that's a long time at one organization. Yes. Which is pretty amazing, especially in senior living where people tend to hop around to different right. organizations quite a bit. Right. So um, eight roles. What was one of the most challenging roles that you were in and why? This role (laughs) today, Um, I I started, I jumped to VP of people in 2019 and I was in an operations role before and, but I've always been very passionate about the team member experience. And so uh, 2019, I had the opportunity to move from an operations role, just like Justin, into this role and then COVID hit. And I don't have a traditional HR background. So what I found was um, I had probably 10 years of HR training in three years. So I've been incredibly blessed, but it's hard. It's the hardest profession right now to recruit and retain. Mm -hmm. So what are some things that y'all are doing at Schlegel that works really well when it comes to recruiting and maybe some things that aren't working as well? Um, I think, uh, you know, book chain is something that's working really well as a retention method. Um, You know, being able to provide flexibility technology. I'm really interested in internal agency and um, hopefully over the course of the two days, we'll learn what other organizations are doing for that. Um, I think we have a huge presence on social media and we have a podcast as well. Check it out. Stories of the Green Bench. Uh, But I think um, we're a family culture. And so the differentiator for us is we really try to be present in having people belong as they are. And we have a slogan, you can be well being part of the family. And although it sounds a bit you know, you just say that, but it doesn't happen. We really try to live that value Mm -hmm. because we want people to be their unique, authentic selves in the organization. So we really uh, try to tell our story to the community and we try to um, showcase the wonderful growth stories within our organization. Uh, We have stories of growth. So we feature the trajectory of leaders who have grown within the organization and tell their story and journey as well as team members. And, you know, some of the success stories, we have a team member, uh, she started as a housekeeper, no formal education. She's now a general manager. And so, you know, those, we want people to look at that and say, hey, that could be me. I'm a great example. I started in recreation. Today, I'm the VP of people. Our COO started as a landscaper. And today That's he amazing. is the chief operating officer. Yeah. So, you know, it um, anybody can have a really rewarding career in senior yeah. living. You know, you, and you hear a lot of people talking about upward mobility to rise up, but clearly it's, you know, seen into the C-suite. That's C-suite right. for you guys. Um, so the, the podcast. Let's hear about that. What is that? So um, back in 2010, our founder, Ron Schlegel, he really uh, had a vision of how can we create opportunities for our residents to share their lived experiences. 
and how can we showcase their skills and abilities. They still have so much to give. Just because you're 90 doesn't mean that you can't give back and you can't um, share those experiences, particularly with our younger team members. Mm -hmm. And so we started creating a program called Elder of the Wisdom, hashtag Elder Wisdom. And we showcase things like pursuit of passions where, uh, you know, residents get to tell their stories and highlight some of their skills. We've done everything from art galleries to, um, masterpiece galas where it might be they they feature their unique talents um, but more recently over the past few years we've done the green bench and we call it stories from the green bench uh, we have the podcast but we also do an event every june it's seniors month in canada in ontario and so we go all over ontario and we go to really high traffic locations like city hall in toronto and we have residents go and sit on that green bench and they invite people just to sit down and chat with them. Yeah. And and it's so organic and so fluid. My best one is a police officer came and sat down and asked a resident, can you give me any marital advice? You've been married, you just said, for 40 years. And the other resident had been married for like 65 years. Give me some advice. And it's just, it's lovely that residents can share their stories. And, you know, they're, they have purpose and it's yeah. meaningful. And it really decreases um, ageism, right? As mm -hmm. a society, we're pretty ageist. Yeah. Oh, you know, you, you, don't, you don't have anything to contribute anymore. So yeah. it's been a great success. Yeah, I think for me coming into senior living, that was, which I never, didn't really know about the industry when I first got in, by the way. Um, <laughs> But like when I would tell my friends, yeah, so, you know, I, wor I work for a tech company that works with senior living. They're like, senior living, like, like, what do you mean, you know? And actually, I spent some time for AccuShield. I was living in Florida for about half a year. Ah. And we had about 100 communities in Florida at the time. And so I drove around all of Florida, like went into about 100 communities. It was a lot. But getting to chat with the EDs, you know, talk to their team members, really more importantly, get to talk with the residents and kind of hear their stories. That's when my eyes kind of opened to like, wow, this is actually a really, really awesome space to be in. Yeah. Um, that didn't have a ton of millennials in at the time, I feel like. So let's transition a little bit to that. So what does recruiting and how has Schlegel kind of worked on, you know, getting millennials, Gen Z, all that? What, what does that strategy look like? And, you know, what's worked well in mm -hmm. that factor? So it's a great question. We try to go more upstream to really showcase that it can be a great career. It's not a sexy profession. It's, it's hard work. Um, I have teenagers. They have no interest in working in senior living. Um, I think they see how hard we work and they're like, not for me. But I think there's rich purpose and meaning. I think you can... Um, showcase the benefits. And so what we do is we get into high schools and talk about careers um, and help students' career path to get into senior living. We also partner with post-secondary institutions, colleges, universities, and we have what's called a living classroom. So the concept really is it's a learning hub where PSW, I know you call them CNAs, um, RPNs, uh, they will actually take their classes right in the village, right in the community. And so they're working alongside our team members, our residents, and by the time they graduate, they already know the village, they know the residents, um, they're comfortable, and we can really help them um, transition right into a role. And so that's kind of been our pipelining for students um, to get them in and to really show, you know, it, it can be a great career. Um, and the culture piece is so important. They have to really see it in action because every single competitor will tell their story. So they actually get to be in front of the story live in real time. So that's been really beneficial for us as an organization. So what did you, what were you talking about today here at the workshop? We, uh, Katrina and I talked about the gig economy and attacking retention like a team sport. And this afternoon, Charles and I are going to talk about partnering with agencies. Hopefully we won't get booed off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, you guys were one of the first to implement Book Jane. Yes. Right. And did you guys implement it whenever COVID hit? Uh, so we did two pilot homes. Uh, Pre-COVID, we, uh, we had a community that had a quite high agency use at the time. We thought it was high. Now looking back, it wasn't. So we thought, okay, let's, let's throw it Book Jane at it 
and see if it sticks. Because if it can work there, it can work anywhere. And sure enough, uh, we picked two villages that had higher agency use. We saw an immediate decrease. They went down to zero agency oh, wow. use. And then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So then we made the decision, um, and it was so new for everybody, do we pull the trigger and start implementing or do we hold back? And we actually asked our villages to put your hand up if, if you want to. Some mm -hmm. were like, heck no, yeah. we're just dealing with this. But we did have a handful that said yes, and thank God we did because mm -hmm. it we wouldn't have been able to survive with without it. And then we just started implementing the rest of the communities. Yeah, and so when you think about the gig economy and kind of the culture we live in today, yeah, where people want more flexibility, you know, you have companies like Uber, DoorDash that are you know taking people away from senior living because people they want to be able to live their lives but also work and make ends meet, right? But do it on their terms, right? So how has Schlegel approach, um, you know? addressing the gig economy and what does that look like? So it's new for us. I mean, we've done, um, we did an internal agency uh, model during the pandemic and it was through the first couple of waves. We called it the sprint team. Yeah. And um, it really, it we deployed our own team members into homes that were really struggling through outbreak. It was easy to do with the book chain tool uh, mm -hmm. to keep track of that. As the pandemic went on and we thought things would get better, not worse, we just didn't have enough team members internally. Homes would go into outbreak and they couldn't spare the team. And then you're just drinking out of a fire hose trying yeah. to recruit in general. You know, most of us lost close to one third of our workforce at the beginning. So uh, we want to get back to that. And that's partly why I'm here is to learn from other organizations yeah. that are doing it. Yeah, It's been awesome to hear from all the speakers, getting to interact with some of the people that we have here today. I think we have about 120 attendees and about 2000 communities represented. So it's been pretty fantastic. I would Amazing. Say. Um, so women in leadership, it's a really big initiative yes. that our industry is highlighting. So from your perspective, why is this so important and why is this so necessary? I think, you know, the equity piece of women in leadership, I'm thrilled. Uh, our organization, when you look at uh, leaders in the communities, leaders at our support office, which is like our corporate office, um, we're sitting at 91%. Oh, wow of women. And in Ontario, it's kind of a trend. You'll see a higher uh, percentage of women in leadership than men. In fact, we would like more men. I think it's it's a nice balance, right? We want to be equitable. Uh, but I think it's important. Women, um, traditionally, right, when you look at those roles, they haven't always had the same advantage. So, you know, I think we have a great uh, support of women in leadership. Ironically, our, our whole organization was founded by um, not just uh, our founder's father, but his mother too. And when he speaks about that, he speaks really about his mom and dad. They started a, a long-term care home in their house uh, in, in a little small rural town in Ontario. But he talks oftentimes more so even of his mom and all she sacrificed and she was behind the scenes. And I think women, um, and I'll have to be careful how I say this, but I think women sometimes have the, the empathy skills um, and they're used to multitasking, yeah. you know, with families and career, but uh, grateful for our organization's commitment to women and also grateful for all the male leaders that support us women in our organization. Yeah, yeah it's good to see the industry heading in that direction, trying yeah. to get more people uh, with seats at the table. That's yeah, right. It's good. So a um, couple last last questions. 20 seconds. Why would you tell someone that they should come to the workshop next year healthcare staffing innovation? Well, it has been so informative. I think, um, and I said this the other day, oftentimes it's the simple strategies that you are like, wow, we could implement that right away. Or you listen to somebody, how they're doing something and you might be doing it, but differently. And you're like, yes, that's mm -hmm. it. So I would encourage people to come. It's been great networking. I think people are very open you don't have to have it figured out. I, I often say like we're managing on the edge of chaos every day. Yeah. We have a great reputation, but we don't have it figured out. We have lots of area for improvement. So um, there is a group full of like-minded people who are really open to listening, sharing, and it's fun too. It's a fun yeah. group. So yeah, it's been an awesome time. I've, I've actually really enjoyed myself. Um, so last thing. You know, what piece of advice would you give your earlier yourself as you were first getting into senior living? Oh, 
good question. I think the advice I would give myself is um, to always keep the resident and the team members in mind. And I said earlier today, people are central, like our team members are central in all we do. Without culturally aligned team members, we can't deliver on our promise of good care and services to our residents. And so when you get wrapped up in the complexity and you know labor relations and, and all of the kind of messy stuff, just keep in mind that we're doing it for our residents and for our team members. And that's the advice I'd give myself to save myself. Oh, yeah, <laughs> love it. Well, all that advice has clearly worked as you've worked your way up the ranks throughout Schlegel. So Christy, really appreciate you speaking, number one at the workshop, but then also taking time to chat with us here. Thank you. The Podcast. Thank appreciate you. It's it. been great. Great.